go on to the newsletter opt-in. And I can hear people going, newsletters, they're so old. They're like rotary dial phones. Couldn't be farther from the truth. And I'm not saying newsletter opt-in, like someone has to opt in and then like every month you are now chained to the wall having to put out content for somebody. The reason I think that this is such a traffic driver is that when someone has searched for something, they land on your post or your page or piece of content. They are in the moment dedicated to that topic, which is tied to your nonprofit, right? It's in your wheelhouse. It's what you're all about. It's a part of your heart and soul. You give this great content, they go, wow, what a great story. See you later website. And they go, and then you are automatically out of their head. The idea behind putting in a newsletter opt-in is that you get folk when they're actually a warm lead to your cause, to your mandate, or to what you want to achieve. So if you don't give them any option, often we hope they'll just go, sign up on their own as a volunteer or they'll become a donor. They might not be ready yet, but we do know that they have a vested interest in this particular topic and you're going to give them something in exchange for their email address. And the reason being is that as much as you can love social, you have to hope that people showed up on that platform when you posted something, that they were interested in what you were talking about, and the algorithm decided to put you up on their feed or not. While you might have a lot of people engaging with you on a particular social platform, they may not be ready at that time to go and learn more information or they actually do really care about the welfare of animals, but right now is not the time that they're ready to think about volunteering. They need some time to think on that. They don't know why they should go and volunteer for you as opposed to the other organization. So what a newsletter opt-in does is you know that person is interested in the topic because they landed on the page, and then you know that your information was useful because they're gonna take something in exchange for giving you their email. And once you have that email, you have their expressed consent for you to reach out to them on your terms. Not when they decide to go on Instagram, not when they decide to go on to your symposium, they are now willing to let you have them into their mailbox. So those opt-ins are really important. And so again, you're gonna look at prior content that you have, and you're going to give something in exchange for that opt-in. Maybe there's a guide, right? So there could be a guide for, for thinking about animal welfare again. Perhaps there's a guide for how to prepare your home to receive the new pet you're going to adopt. Maybe you're going to make a cheat sheet. Maybe you teach literacy to, to those who are new to Canada and how to read the English language. And you want to give them a super friendly cheat sheet about how to, how to say seven wonderful uh, expressions about thank you very much for the lovely meal you cooked me. Right? You, again, you'd have a lot of fun with this. There's a lot of places we can go. Or maybe you have quizzes. Maybe you uh, have noticed over the years that people always ask the same question around this topic. It'd be really fun if they could find out which adoptable animal could you be? Or which beluga whale that we have in the harbor that we named last year are you most like? Or you could also give them reports. So after you've done your AGM or you've been a part of a larger organization that ran a wonderful, beautiful deep dive report, on the state of, of the state of local housing or report on the state of, I don't know, of uh, workers' compensation in your province. People want that information. And so if you create a post that they're interested in and then they want more, then they're telling you like, I am so interested in this piece and I would like to have it. And then you've got their email, which will take us into step number four. But in this step here, what can you do? So you can use Canva to create some of the things you want for free. Let me see here. You can use drip scripts. Let me see here. MailChimp, Active Campaign, Tiny Letter, all kinds of things that you use. So I'm wondering if anybody here has a topic and they would like for me to help brainstorm what they could do for an opt in. It's like the best part. Yeah, people, that's actually the question I was thinking. Okay, so we've got Mary Lou Miller asking about cancer care. Okay. Well, Mary Lou, I mean, of course, this is out of my, my realm altogether, but I would think about, I would say for that, we've got, I would say, okay, who are you talking to? Is the thing you're going to give for the person who is going through it or the person is going to be that caregiver? Ah, we got two different sections here. Maybe you want to create a guide for caregivers to prepare them for their own self-care as caregivers. The whole other topic here is just those caring for the for those who need it who's caring for the caregiver 
So that could be a guide in there. Of course, you know, we would understand what makes sense um, from an ethical and tasteful way that you want to do that. But I'm sure there's a wealth of guides that are there any common questions that get asked or is there a common sentiment or feeling that happens for a caregiver that you want to calm them with or give them make them feel supported by creating a guide i mean again it depends on what you're doing and the nature and the tonality of what you're doing but maybe that guide is you know my spouse has been diagnosed with certain cancer now what a three-page guide or a 10-step guide on how to prepare for your first call with your specialist that could be very useful cheat sheets i'm not so sure for that one but again maybe in the community you could have oh i mean cancer care maybe uh, a lot of past people who have gone through maybe they have favorite recipes that they want to put together in a little book they can download there's something like that there could be a report on the state of cancer care in your province what has changed what is different what what you know what strides have been made that report can be more aimed at i don't know if your mandate at that point is to get more um, organizations on board with what you're doing so you kind of have to frame your opt-in and your content around who you're talking to at the moment your key audience but that could be one cookbook I could see like a like a download of 20 recipes from our you know from our our, our clientele or whoever however you want to name it guides could be for those going through it guides could be for those helping out with being the caregiver there could be a guide for basic language or you could have even a resource of just all the numbers in the province that you can call I think about that for a number of years ago, a local paper here called The Coast did a huge piece on everything for family planning um, and abortion. And it was a great list for all the Atlantic provinces of every location, every phone number, how to call, wait times, all of that great stuff that could help um, individuals with their family planning. So that's an option that you could have if you've identified, again, you already have content you could turn into something that people would want to have, something useful, right? Like don't mm -hmm. just give people emails, a good useful thing. Good. Mary Lou actually has a follow-up question, which is around, would you talk to potentially to donors in the same manner? Or like what kind of exchange magnet would you do with potential donors? Ooh, so potential donors could be a fun one. I think in that case, I think success stories, not success stories, sorry, stories work really well. You could, if you have anything that maybe there was a really long project you worked on that took three, four, five years. So and you could talk about the milestones that that hit and the journey that came out of it. It really does depend on, especially now with COVID where we can't really have people go in and see what's going on. For donors, of course, if they haven't donated yet, you could still, it could still be about the topic at hand. It really depends on the nature of your nonprofit and how long that donor cycle is, how, how much or how little you're asking of them monetary or time donation and what you expect out of them. But I would say, is there any success story so that they can, they can download that or a guide so they can see, I, I guess another great way of being is even a guide for how to do something would show a donor that your organization is proactive, that you actually do help and that you do have the resources that, oh my gosh, if only they had more funding, if they could put this together, imagine what they could do with more donations. 